Hi guys, this is the second of the two videos I've done today on the brand new Sigma Art 1.4 lenses. I did one on the 24 millimeter Sigma Art 1.4 and now this one here is the 20 millimeter 1.4 and now they are saying in the literature that I received, this is a big astrophotography lens. This is a big deal for astrophotography but this is also a 20 millimeter lens and a guy like me, I love to vlog and 20 millimeters, that is a great vlogging focal length. If you are an astro vlogger, it's gonna be hard to keep your pants on during this video, so uh, let's get into it. So thanks to Sigma Canada for sending these guys over. I am currently in Newfoundland, supposedly on vacation, but this, you know what? This is how I like to spend my vacation. I talked about that in this other lens review, but I really just, I love cameras, and it's just, hey, Sigma's like, do you want to take fancy lenses to Newfoundland, your picturesque home where you can take all kinds of nice photos and videos. And I was like, thanks very much. Do I have to send them back? And they were like, yes, you do, which is really too bad. Anyway, let's talk about this fancy, fancy lens that you are looking at right now. First of all, look at that wide field of view. I am shooting at uh, f 1.4 because not only to get bokeh, but also to test the, uh, the amount of focus breathing that you might get at such a shallow depth of field. Now I will do a real focus breathing test later, but still this is nice to know in a vlogging situation if the frame is going to go in and out as I move around. But the thing is with this lens, this 20 millimeter, the focus breathing is very well controlled. There is a little bit, but it is now the sun is changing a lot. I'm sorry about my exposure here. Let's adjust my ND. Wait, oh, right back to pretty. And that's the thing you can put an ND filter on the front of this lens and you are not going to get vignetting. Now they suggest not a thick filter. If you're gonna use a polarizer or an ND, you might not wanna stack things too big or get too thick of a filter. But right now I'm using one of the magnetic filters and uh, it is quite thin and now the sun came back out. Oh, I gotta readjust my exposure like a professional. But speaking of NDs, this is gonna really interest the astrophotographers, especially if you didn't watch my other video. But uh, look at this, on the back here, there is a little slot for a sheet filter. Now a sheet filter can is another filter you can apply to your lens and when you use a sheet filter on the back, it is better for things like astrophotography. Now you can stack back and front if you want, but this is going to be a major advantage for people who want to use sheet filters for optimal results, especially with astrophotography. Now, so this is the 20 millimeter Sigma art lens in the studio, and this can definitely work as a studio lens, especially if you are someone who has a very small space. Like right now, I am touching the lens. I am sitting about a foot away from this glorious, beautiful lens and so if you're let's say you're one of those van life people you know yeah you, you don't have any shoes you never wash your feet but you need a lens that uh, can deal with a tight situation you know you're set up in your dirty old camper van there that you never wash just like your feet you're not dirty listen you camper go out there live your lives you're off the grid man we're all jealous you, you know look at me i'm tied down with family children Sometimes I think about getting in a van and throwing away all my shoes. I'm gonna join you people soon and I will take a 20 millimeter, maybe an F 1.4 lens with me. Look at this wide angle lenses, like 20 millimeters. It is tough to blur out the background, but on a 1.4, I think we've done it. Let's see about the corners. How warpy is it? How warpy, huh? It's not too bad. This is very, very doable especially in a van. So look at all of the buttons here. It's the same buttons on both lenses. So you have autofocus, manual focus, focus hole button. You have a, uh, an aperture ring that you can click or de-click and you can also put the aperture ring in A mode and then uh, lock it on the back there so it will never go out of A mode when you lock it. See that? Now it's locked and I can't get it out. And it also has a new button which is the uh, manual focus lock. Now this is great for video and for astro 
as well because if you want to say set your manual focus and then you want it to stay there you know you're not going to move your focal point is not going to change like let's say you you focused on orion or whatever you astrophotographers do and you want to leave it where it is click the manual focus lock now if the ring gets spun by accident nothing is going to happen and that is also great for video because if say if you're in manual focus and you set up your shot and you know you don't want it to move click it right there nothing's gonna happen some assistant director walks by tries to spin the focus ring you know like they like to do absolutely fantastic addition to a lens now he is a bit of a chunky boy he is 630 grams it is not the smallest and lightest lens to use in the world but uh, I did take it out to the old vlogging so uh, let's go check that out so now while this isn't the lightest setup in the world this is a pretty big lens look at that focal length 20 millimeters just about perfect for the old vlogging situation. So as long as your shoulders aren't jello like myself, then uh, you should be able to take this out vlogging. I am using the active stabilization on the A7 IV, so that's cropping in about 10%. But look at that, still the world behind me. And I am at F1.4 because I don't want you guys to see what's behind me. I want it obliterated. This is a little too much uh, background blur probably. You should set it at maybe F2 something like that. But I just want to show you guys what this lens can do. Huh? You, you don't want to, maybe there's a bunch of people back there, a bunch of uggos, you know, and peeing on rocks and stuff. You don't want people to see that? Go down to f1.4. Then you're, uh, you're cooking with gas then, my friend. Now, of course, you can always catalyst browse this guy to make uh, your footage even more smooth. Just run it through the free software, catalyst browse, and look at this. I've cropped in about 10%, so it's probably about the same as active stabilization. So uh, this step isn't necessary as long as you have steady hands on active stabilization. But let's say you don't. Let's say you drank a bunch of coffees, hypothetically, like I did today, literally. Then, uh, you know, maybe a catalyst browser will be the way to go. Flaring and ghosting is so well controlled on this lens. That's important, you know, especially when you're doing the night sky or just in general. Uh, Sigma worked really hard on getting the flaring and the ghosting to a minimum and they did a fantastic job uh, when your subject is backlit as well this is going to pay huge dividends when you're using a lens like this fantastic job oh did I mention the price because the price is quite good you get a 20 millimeter Sigma art lens f 1.4 right now they are saying for eight 99 check the description to make sure that that is true because that to me sounds like a great price for a lens of this caliber just uh, you know if you are doing the astro vlogging this is a no-brainer chromatic aberration is well controlled longitudinal chromatic aberration is well controlled the thing takes fantastic pictures to have an ultra wide just the 20 millimeters with the 1.4 took it around st john's took some lovely pictures with my wonderful skill oh the sun's back out we're just oh i went the wrong way with my filter See, isn't it nice to be able to put an ND filter on a big old lens? The, the uh, filter thread size is 82 millimeters. So it's a big boy in terms of, but it's trying to let in all that light so that you can get all of the, the Saturn. What are you taking pictures of exactly out there? Now there is a fair amount of vignetting when you are wide open, but like, look at how wide the lens is. So uh, that is understandable. By the time you stop down to about F 2.8, I found that that vignetting was pretty much cleared up. So man, these two offerings from Sigma, the 24 millimeters and the 20 millimeter art series lens f 1.4 for the prices that they are. These are just great, great bargains is one of the things I love about my Sony system is my Sigma lenses. I am buying a lot of Sigma lenses all the time. They are my favorite third party manufacturer of lenses. I, uh, and I really appreciate Sigma Canada sending them over to a little channel like me so that uh, I could review them while my family stares daggers at me from uh, the patio over there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and uh, if you haven't seen the 24 millimeter video, why don't you go watch that one now? And then, you know, just watch them on a loop. I would appreciate that. The algorithm will uh, reward me handsomely. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.